Hey y'all, welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Colton, here with Brandon. Relatively light week for news on the Whites front this week, but we do have power rankings to talk about. You know it, it's Kilua's power ranking poll. It's really fun to look and see what everyone else who makes Weiss tube stuff and what the best players in the world have to say about the meta and what's good and what's not. So we will be jumping into that in full force in just a moment. Real quick, one quick announcement. We are getting an Overlord reprint in English in 2022. Not what I was expecting, Brandon. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that is what nobody was expecting in 2022, but it uh, should be early 2022. So if you want to get into Overlord and hadn't already, and you want sealed product, go right for it. It is only the booster box. It is not the trial deck. So you may still need to find some of those trial deck cards, especially if you're going for some of the more meta builds, but it is coming out. Yeah, Overlord specifically is a very interesting choice for this, I think. It it was not played, basically, as soon as it came out, as far as meta was concerned. Like, if you like Overlord, great, by all means. But I'm surprised to see a, a set that's getting so little meta play. And with no announcement of a sequel, too. Like, it's not like Overlord 2 is coming out anytime soon. If it does, it probably won't be until 2023. So, I don't know. It's an odd choice. For sure, but we'll see what Bushiro does with it long term. We'll see if there are any additional sets potentially for Overlord in the works in the future. But in the meantime, if you're into Overlord, if you want to buy it, it's getting a reprint. First quarter of 2022. Uh, that's according to Connor Pelham, also known as Boats Don't Sink. Thanks to him for that tidbit. And that is basically all the Weiss news for this week. So let's get into the power rankings. Brandon. Kilua. Kevin asked a whole bunch of people, content creators, good players, you know, people who are connected to Weiss and its meta, to respond to a survey asking what they thought of various sets. The sets included were ones that got at least five players during Springfest, and also anything that was released after Springfest, including stuff that is coming out in English that we have card lists for. So that's the field. That's the group of sets we're talking about. So it's not, you know, we're not ranking everything here. Only stuff that was played at Springfest by five people or more. And stuff that is coming out post Springfest. So, that being said, the survey was sent out to a bunch of people, us included. Both of us also filled out the survey. Thank you, Kilua, by the way. It's very kind of you. And the results are in. And there's a lot to talk about. Because there is there are some very interesting responses to what is and is not meta for Weiss in English as of September 2021. And we will start at Tier 1, which of course includes Dal. So as part of the survey we were asked to include what we think the best deck in the set is, kind of as the representative for that set. Eight standby Dow, clear number one. Never was a doubt, really. I'm a little bit surprised, though, at how closely the next two follow it in Tier 1. Kaguya, which is standby salvage, and the new slime stuff, Eight standby seems to be the favorite, although pants, salvage, and eight choice are also pretty viable. Brandon, what do you make of this top tier? I think it's relatively close to what we would expect. Notably, Dal is also getting support later this year, and Kevin decided to put the Dal with support and Dal together because they were in about the same spot anyway. Yeah, it's not like Dal got worse because it got dateable and stuff. Exactly. Dal would normally have two slots as well. Those were combined together. I think that's worth mentioning that Dal took the top two spots, technically. Yeah. Verifying it's kind of above and beyond most of everything else here. Yeah. Like, looking at the scores, mm -hmm. the next score is 81.51. So these decks are all, you know, almost seven points or more above everything else in the popular imagination. I personally 
would put Dal on its own tier because of just how dominant it's been. And I also don't really think that Kaguya or Slime 2 really answers Dal. I think they're both good. And I think they'll be dominant in their other matchups, but I still think Dal has a favorable matchup against both Kaguya and Slime for now. As we stand, I would still say Dal is kind of in its own place, but yeah, I think that the new Slime and Kaguya are both excellent for sure. Like, we can't look at JP because Dal is nerfed in JP, right? Like, it's missing pieces, um, essentially, because of the restricted list. So we haven't really gotten a good chance to see Slime 2 versus Dal or Data Bullet in a competitive environment yet. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when that actually does happen. I think I do agree that these three are, if not the top three, at the very least, very close to being top three. Looking down at the rest of the power rankings, there isn't really anything else that I would immediately say is up here at this tier. There are a couple of things that I think get close, and we'll talk about those. But I'm okay with these being 1, 2, 3 for right now, especially because we haven't even seen Slime 2 in a competitive environment against the English meta yet. So now let's move down to the next tier, which is not tier 2, but tier 1.5. I think it actually is a very important distinction between Tier 1 and Tier 2 here, to have that Tier 1.5. This is the range where it should be still relatively competitive, still relatively, like, in step with the top three here. In Tier 1.5, in order, Fate, Old Slime, Mushoko Tensei, which drops in 2022, and Bang Dream with support, which also drops in 2022. I'm going to be honest. Fate doesn't belong here. It's time to give up on 8-bar. Its level 1 combo needs reverses, and it can't get them against standby targets. Its level 3 gets blinked away to Oblivion, and it doesn't have a damage top end. It doesn't do damage at the top the way it needs to. It has to be a two-turn endgame, and it loses its soul wall in most matchups with good decks, because most good stuff now has some kind of blink. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. 8-bar is not competitive anymore, Brandon, and it showed at Springfest. It didn't even place at Springfest. I think it's going to have a difficult run as it goes forward, for sure. The cost zero bombs and the needing of the reverse for the combo to help generate things going forward that way becomes a lot more difficult, for sure. The one thing that the 8-bar engine has going forward is the back row support on the Brainstormer, but... I don't think that that's enough benefit. Tier 1 is essentially standby focused. There's going to be so much standby at the top. If you're playing 8-bar, you are trying to push yourself into level 1 so that you can reverse zeros on board. But realistically, it's going to be so easy for anything that's running 8 standby to deny reverses, either by crashing lanes or not just not swinging, standbying over when they get a trigger, dropping 1-1s one on the board, you know, by playing standby out of hand. It's it's just so hard for green fate to plus. That being said, we have new fate stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think the Ilya Pants is the best combo right now. And that isn't saying much. It's not great. It's fine. The Sakura top end is pretty solid. You know, the, the triple Icy Tail that's essentially free is pretty solid. Six instances of damage plus the potential to mill. But... I've played a lot of Fate, I love Fate dearly, and I want it to be good. But it's not tier 1.5, I just, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense here. I would have definitely put it in tier 2, maybe even lower. But moving on from Fate, Slime 1 did well, played into Dal decently well. I think ultimately, Slime 1 will be upstaged by Slime 2, I think we both agree on that. Mm-hmm. So it makes me a little bit sad that the Shizu level 1 and the 3-2 early plays, it makes me a little bit sad to see that go away because that's actually a really solid and really fun deck. It's annoying to play into because of its memory compression, but Slime 2 does what it does just a little bit better. And it's not that this deck will probably even go away. I suspect there'll be some people that play this deck still, so you may even still see this in competitive play with just even more memory compression tools. Mushoko Tensei? It got my attention to see it this high, and I was surprised to see it this high 
until I realized that it actually has a lot of really nice anti-standby stuff. Not formal anti-standby, but it really brings power levels down across the board. And I think it can play into Dal potentially. And that's, you know, obviously something that is crucial in this meta. If you can play into something that's playing eight standby, especially Data Live, and reverse what it has on board, you can do a lot. And Mushoko Tensei has that potential. Yeah, you're specifically looking at the bar top end with that, looking yes. at the ability to minus power to your opponent's field, cross field, like the whole thing. So potentially being able to eliminate the back row Toka from even becoming a factor at that point as early as level two, I think is a pretty sizable game changer there. Especially since we talked about how essentially tier one was basically standby, having a, a deck with some anti-standby synergy makes complete sense to be in this tier. I know I didn't rate Mashoko Tensei when it was coming out through the power ranking. I don't believe you did either, Colton. No, I didn't. Partly because that was far enough out in advance that it's not going to be a factor coming into Rumble. I didn't spend the time looking into it, partly because it wasn't going to be a factor for this next upcoming session. But seeing it here in this spot in the tier list, I actually completely agree. And as long as the consistency pieces that it has work well, I actually could see this even going higher on this tier list. It certainly has potential. And honestly, I'm just glad to see something that can dunk on standby a little bit. Next is Bang Dream 2. Bang Dream has been getting a lot of support for a lot of years, but the deck, you've had options with Bang Dream, but the meta list has, you know, not changed too much in recent years. This takes it to literally an entirely new tier with the new Choice Pants. I think it's fine. Uh, it has a lot of healing, it has a lot of power, so it has a lot of potential to be big, stay big, come in early at two. I think it's going to have a chance to be able to compete a little bit with some standby decks just because it can get big enough quickly. But I think that if it gets hit to be able to remove some of it from board or you're able to defend against it when it gets big on its own turn, it's not going to be as beneficial. But the same on that same token, it's also going to be after Rumble, theoretically. Rumble's supposed to be in December, early January. This is supposed to come out late January. So I think it can be a player down the road especially if standby decks start becoming less and less viable. Otherwise, I think the the rating where it is is about right, maybe slightly high. It's really on that cusp of tier 1.5 to tier 2 based on just numbers alone. I would probably dull it back just to tier 2, but high tier 2. So moving into tier 2, we're talking about stuff that is kind of on the outside looking in when it comes to the top of the meta, but stuff that's still potentially really viable. Sword Art is on here twice, both the old Sword Art stuff and the Alicization stuff. Honestly, surprised to see it this low. I thought it would have snuck into a more of a 1.5 kind of position. What do you think, as the channel's resident Sword Art player, Brandon, do you think that Sword Art is potentially underrated here, especially given how well it did at Springfest? I think it's about right. I think Springfest really highlighted some of that Avatar net traits, and while there's some support for it, there's not a whole lot of support for it. The... Biggest thing being adding an additional standby trigger, so you could actually potentially run eight standby, which then again only kind of highlights how important standby is currently in the meta. Looking at the Flucklight traits, there's a lot of different ways it can go with a lot of different possibilities, but I think realistically, once everything's said and done, it's going to look a lot like where Fate is. So I would probably put it in the same spot as where Fate's going to end up. So I would, put them, I would put them both at tier 2, but high tier 2. I think my favorite thing about this tier 2 group is that all of these decks have the potential to really punch above their weight and do well in organized tournaments at high levels. Like, Love Live Sunshine did well at Springfest. It still packs a punch. I mean, extra swings starting from level 2. Like, what can you do? You know, and it has really good pieces to put it all together and you know, keep its board intact and just keep swinging for high damage, it's still, obviously, pretty viable. Seven Deadly Sins does a good job in a lot of matchups of disrupting combos, disrupting extra damage, playing defense. You know, defensive decks always, it seems, tend to 
peak kind of early and then fall off. I think Seven Deadly Sins is a defensive deck, defensive build that can hold on and be a part of the meta for longer. The only thing really in Tier 2 that I don't think belongs here is Konosuba. And it might just be because I've gotten snake bitten by Konosuba for so long. I really thought Konosuba was going to be great when the new set dropped. And then it wasn't because Dal immediately killed it. And it never really recovered. Its top ends are all way too expensive for their effects. And it's, I don't, I don't buy it. I'm off the Konosuba train for sure. But I think the rest of tier two fits. What do you see with the rest of tier two? Well, realistically, I think what tier two really demonstrates to me, these all say high explosive end games. The ones that don't are defensive. So you either have that defensive build or the high explosive top end. You're looking at Quince, you're looking at Love Live, you're looking at Adventure Time, all having high explosive top end. Konosuba, high explosive top end. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. ReZero, a bit more defensive in its build. You're looking at high power levels at two. Tools like the back row rest brainstormer. You have tools there to be able to deny your opponent's actions on board. You have Seven Deadly Sins, which is more of the defensive top end. The hex proof makes it a little more difficult to deal with. That some decks can't deal with at all. Yeah. And even really SAO 8 standby build is much more of a defensive build. Trying to get more of that win power early, as well as like the money counter. I just think you have that aspect of tier two, but it's either like high damage or high defense. Yeah, it almost feels like tier one is the stuff that can play offense and defense at a high level, and tier two is the stuff that can kind of do one or the other. Yes. ReZero is interesting. I think if ReZero had a better level one game, we would be talking about it as tier 1.5, because I think its level three game is really strong, but... The fact that we're still running the old book combo is kind of frustrating because that combo just isn't great and a book trigger is not very good. I mean, it's not bad, but everything else is running, you know, salvage or choice or pants at level one. And you've got, you know, here's ReZero still running book. And I think that it loses a lot of its advantage because of its kind of ho-hum level one game. It's close, but it's not quite there. So that's tier two. Moving on to tiers 2.5 and 3. This is an eclectic group. You've got some stuff here that's kind of all over the place. When I look at this, I go, wow, Bofuri is way too low. For getting two top eights? Anything that gets two top eights in Springfest, I think Bofuri is better than people give it credit for. It's got a not terrible matchup with Data Live. And. Like I said, it topped Springfest twice. That's decent, you know? And it didn't even have that high of representation. It just did well. Mm -hmm. So curious to see if maybe Bofuri's representation goes up, especially considering that it's not an expensive set to buy into. And there are multiple viable builds. I'd like to see more Bofuri. I think it's better than it's been getting credit for. Um, whether you play 8 Standby or 8 Book or even 2 Souls, I think it's I think it's decent. I think there's something there. Brandon, what do you see in tiers 2.5 and 3? I think it's notable to see AOT down this far low. I think that would be it should be a little bit higher. I think it still has that explosive top end to be able to close out games. Outside of that, Goblin Slayer, especially in its more recent form, looking a bit more defensive. Uh, so it makes sense that it, to see it close to here. Realistically, it's also high enough on the scale. It was also pretty close to the bottom end of 2. Outside of that, everything else makes relative uh, sense. Magia Record could be a little bit higher, I think, but I don't know that it cracks into Tier 2. But outside of that, everything else is about spot on of where I would place it to. Yeah, this is all stuff that has an outside chance of topping a major event, I think with the exception of things like Bofuri and Attack on Titan, both of which are, you know, they have better chances than the rest of this stuff. I think that outside of those two, though, if you're playing something in this tier, I think think you should be playing it because you like it, not necessarily because you think it's meta viable. Grand Order is always going to be interesting because there's more Camelot forthcoming, right? And that is the thing. What does Camelot look like with the traits? And Bang Dream, of course, you know, literally is getting support. This is old Bang Dream that is ranking down here. So like with Bang Dream getting new support, Grand Order probably getting new support in English, 
the potential that there's another ReZero set on the horizon at some point, you know, the, you know, that's always a possibility. This is the stuff that is either going to get the support it needs to vault closer to the top, or it's not going to be a part of the next power ranking. So we'll see with a lot of this. But yeah, I think aside from AOT and Bofrey, I think you're right. I think a lot of this, it looks right in this spot. So real quick, Brandon, before we get to the community results, I do want to ask you a question. If you could take one set that is not in the power ranking, that was not on the survey, and put it in the power ranking and put it in a tier, what are you picking and where are you putting it? Realistically, I'm going to go with Ruby because we know nothing about it. Wow, you that's cheating. Exactly. It is exactly cheating. Oh my gosh. There's nothing. There is not a single set that you think this is the top 24 sets in Weiss. No exceptions. Can other things do well? Sure. Do I think that they have the same consistency and the same explosiveness at the top end? I don't want to take the one you're about to say, so I'm going to say Ruby. Okay, so that non-answer aside. The joke answer is Haruhi, obviously, because, you know, gotta stay consistent with the brand. But the real answer is, I think Persona 5 is still better than people give it credit for. You know, it gets pretty big at level 1 on defense. Has a pretty explosive level 3 top end. Has really nice consistency tools with the level 1 event. You know, and it has the bonder. Like, it's a very tight build. And it's kind of like, you know, almost exactly what the 50 cards are going to be when you see Persona, because there's only, like, one potentially good build here. Unless you, like, really want to play the level 1 Morgana. But, yeah, it's, you know, I would rather play Persona at a tournament than Bunny Girl or Memory Snow. Pretty solidly in at least Tier 3, kind of pushing towards 2.5. And, of course, Milky Holmes is Tier 0. Anyway... The community also put together a tier list. Kevin put out this same list out to others in the community as well, um, just so we can get a broader idea of where the community thinks that some of these sets rank. Notably that this tier list that he put out only has stuff that's currently out, not stuff that's in the near coming future. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of similarities here. Dal and Kaguya, kind of one, two. Slime's up there. I still think that both Fate and Konosuba are way overrated here. I would easily put them in Tier 3 without any questions. I love the Adventure Time love, though. I'm here for this. Adventure Time is pretty solid, and I think we should give it a little bit more love. It's pretty good. It's got a really nice explosive top end. The mid-game's a little confused, I think. It's a little um, inconsistent. It's not... You know, it doesn't have great mid-game pieces, but, like, once that end game hits the board, it can close a game from 3-0 with as much consistency as the best top ends in English Weiss. So, um, I like it. I, I like Adventure Time, and I think that it sitting on Tier 2 looks right to me. I do also think, though, that on Tier 3, Love Life Sunshine and Sword Art, both of which did so well at Spring Fest, need to get bumped up a little bit. But... Overall, like, there aren't a ton of surprises here, right? Like, this is stuff that you see at tournaments. This is stuff people play at locals. They see it all the time. It makes sense that this is where people would put things. It parallels what's going on in, you know, the the meta kind of analysis in a lot of ways. It's very similar. Is there anything here that surprises you, Brandon? Or anything here that you notice? This list, not so much. Um, again, kind of still the Bofree being so low. Yeah, I would agree. It may have struggled with some of that consistency that we see with some of the top decks. Sure. But that's why you play Two Souls, because Two Souls are the ultimate of consistency. Outside of that, yeah, I think the list I think the list is very similar to the other one. Yeah, I think that, by and large, most people kind of agree on what the meta is and isn't. And then you're going to get, you know, everyone's going to have, like, their one or two sets that are like, oh, this is too high, or oh, this isn't high enough. I mean, you know, everyone kind of does that, I think. But by and large, I mean, clearly, like, this is what the community thinks at large, right? And the community is hardly a monolith. But it's cool to get this kind of data to see what people think is good and why. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps us kind of look toward what comes next. You know, we're in the middle of Shop League now. We got Rumble coming up this winter. And as we prepare for that stuff, it's kind of cool to see where everybody else is at in terms of the meta. I think one of the biggest things that actually this really highlights for us 
is the next three sets that are outcoming. Yeah. We see Slime, Alicization, and Quintuplets all in either Tier 1 or Tier 2. So all of three of those being ones that are going to drastically, I think, impact all of these sets are stuff that we need to be aware of and paying attention to as we go into Rumble in the wintertime. And that is it. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Clock Talk. We will be back on Thursday, 5 Cards 5 Minutes. We're talking about Uncommons and Commons for Slime 2. Next Tuesday, I will have a deck tech. It's another Fate deck. We'll have gameplay for that the following Thursday. And then two weeks from now, another Clock Talk. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And have a good one. We'll see you then.